Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at our uh, FSTA final study guide. We're going to be looking at problems 19 through 27. These cover uh, mostly the linear algebra portion of the course. Uh, so starting with number 19, finding the slope of the line that goes through those two points. Uh, hopefully you remember this formula. Um, you can always sketch out a little graph too, but the formula goes like this, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It doesn't really matter which one are the 2s and the 1s, but I typically kind of keep it lined up. Now it's going to be the negative 2, because that's the y-coordinate, minus the negative 9. So I'm just going to go plus 9. And I started with a negative 2, so that means I have to start with a 1 minus the negative 3, so really plus 3. And so that's what that's going to look like. Uh, so we get that down to 7 over 4. Just leave that as the fraction. Uh, if your fraction can be reduced, you should do that, but otherwise... Uh, just leave that as a fraction. Don't bother with the decimal. Certainly don't do an approximation. Uh, number 20, find the slope of the line. Sketch the graph. So we've got 4x plus 5y equals 22. Now there is a little trick that we can use when we have the uh, standard form of an equation for a line. The slope is the opposite of a over b. Um, it, or if you wanted to, you could just use... Uh, rewrite that in slope-intercept form. The y-intercept also uh, is just the c value, in this case 22, over b. So y-intercept is c over b. Um, but at the same time, that's you know, not going to be a very nice point in this case, so we might want to find something a little bit different just so we have a nice point to use. Uh, in this case, though, the slope would actually be uh, negative 4 over 5. Um, the y-intercept, again, not a nice point, is going to be 22 fifths. Uh, the x-intercept, I didn't mention that before, but that's uh, c over a. The x-intercept, also not a nice point, that's 22 fourths. So 22 fifths, 22 fourths, not really nice uh, values to deal with. So you may want to try to find some other combination, trying to figure out how to get 22 from fours and fives. One thing that I see right there is that if I do uh, four times three, I get 12. And so then I just need a five times a two to get 22. So the point that I would be coming up with there would be three, two. Um, so again, some fancy math work there to get a nice point, 3, 2. And then from there, using the slope of negative 4 fifths is fairly simple. I can go down 4, right 5 gets me to here. Up 4, left 5 gets me to there. I do like to uh, kind of continue extending that uh, as long as I'm on the graph still but that's what that graph would look like. So, and notice the not nice intercepts that we have, the y-intercept 22 fifths, you know, a little bit below, um, actually that should be a little bit above four. So my point's a little bit off there. And then the 22 fourths for the x-intercept um, again, should be a little over five, five and a half, really, I suppose. Um, so that looks like that's about the right place. So um, that's how we would graph that. Moving on to 21, they want us to come up with an equation for the line and write it in standard form. So they give us a point that it goes through and the slope. So I would probably start with point slope form, which looks like this. And so we put the point in and the slope in. So we go y minus 4 equals the slope negative 5 sevenths times x minus 2. Now, if I'm going to go for standard form, I can't have any fractions. So I would probably right away just deal with that 7. So multiply both sides. On the left side, we end up with 7y minus 28. And on the right side, we get negative 5 times the x minus 2. And again, we're just 
And the only thing that happens on the right side is those sevens cancel out. Sometimes people try to overdo it and they end up multiplying the x minus two by seven as well. But again, it's already been multiplied by the seven, but the only effect it has is to get rid of that seven in the denominator. Uh, so we can uh, distribute the negative five into those parentheses. Seven uh, y minus 28 will stay the same for a minute here. Get negative five x plus 10. Fix my equal sign there. Um, wait, why did I have, oh yeah, x and y, okay. Confusing myself there for a second. Um, all right, I want standard form. So I want to get the x's and y's on the same side. Um, fine point, we do want that x to be positive, so I'll add that to both sides, although that would probably be the choice you'd make anyway. And if I'm putting those on the left, then I want the number on the right. So we get 5x plus 7y equals 38. That's the equation. Uh, of a line that fits that uh, information that goes through 2, 4 with a slope of negative 5 sevenths, and they wanted that in standard form. So there we go. Next problem we have is 24. It's similar to the last one, except now they want the equation in slope-intercept form. Um, and they tell us it goes through negative 6, 5, and it's parallel to negative 7x plus 5y equals 57. Uh, again, if you know the, the trick for... Uh, getting the slope out of the standard form, that's going to work great here. Slope would be a positive 7 over 5. You could also, um, again, just rewrite that in slope-intercept form to figure that out. At this point, then, again, the, the slope for that line is 7 fifths. And I want to write an equation uh, for a line that's parallel to that one. That would mean they would have the same slope. So that slope of 7 fifths is also my slope that I'm writing uh, my equation for, and it goes through negative 6, 5. Uh, they want slope intercept, but it's much easier to start in point slope, so I would do, oops, get to my pen here, uh, y minus 5 equals the 7 fifths, and then x plus 6, really. Um, now, they want slope intercept form, so I don't necessarily need to uh, worry about getting rid of that fraction, and I don't know that I necessarily would. Um, I suppose you could either way. Um, I think I would just leave it though for now. So just distributing that 7 fifths through. So we get 7 fifths x plus uh, 7 times 6 would be 42, so 42 fifths. Uh, and then we would add the 5 to both sides. Now I'm going to be adding that 5 to the 42 fifths. Your calculator, of course, could do that pretty well. Um, and fifths are nice enough uh, decimals, you could use the decimal there. It's almost easier for me to think of it as a fraction, though, which I know is weird, but um, 5 is the same as 25 fifths, so adding that to 42 fifths gets me to 67 fifths. And I kind of had to sneak my plus sign in there because I didn't leave much room for it, but that would be that equation. Um, again, I would guess that the multiple choice option would be in fraction form. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to know those decimals, and those are exact because fifths are uh, exact decimals, so you could use that as well. Uh, okay, same sort of thing. It goes through negative 3, 8, but now it's perpendicular to this one. That means that the slope of this line, which is um, negative, or 3, sorry, 3 over 4, uh, would be the opposite reciprocal to the perpendicular slope so this one here is positive. That means that the slope here will be negative. And then we just flip it over, so negative 4 thirds. So again, a little bit of work there to get that slope, uh, perpendicular slope that we need. But the slope that we're actually using is negative 4 thirds, and it goes through negative 3 8. From there, it's just going to be the same kind of deal. Uh, I'm going to start with point slope form. So y minus 8 equals negative 4 thirds times x plus 3. Ooh, in this case, it actually works out nicely where my slope and my x value uh, are going to kind of agree with each other a bit here. So I get negative 4 thirds x, and then this ends up being just negative 4 or minus 4. So a little bit easier there, adding the 8 then just to the plane minus 4. We get y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. And so that's the equation for the line that goes through negative 3, 8, and is perpendicular to negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 23. And then these will be the last two questions that we look at here, 26 and 27, graphing compound inequalities. Um, so one of the things I want to emphasize here, 
the and, very important that we're looking at that. So and means that we're only going to shade in the area that's shaded by both inequalities. Um, the x plus y greater than or equal to 2, that one's easy enough to get into uh, slope-intercept form that I would probably just recommend that. Uh, has a y-intercept of 2, so we start there. as a slope of negative 1, so we go down one, right one. Probably do that for a little while, at least on my graph. Um, trying to line these up as well as I can without having an actual grid. Uh, and then up one, left one as I go the other direction. And I'm kind of off the grid there. It is. Uh, it does have the equal to, so we would do a solid line. I'm actually pretty proud, proud of that line. A little wavy, I suppose, but still. Um, and then the shading part. Now, there's a few different ways I know that we go over this. Um, the first way uh, that people tend to like to do this is using a test point. Uh, as long as the line doesn't go through the origin, that's a good test point. If I plug zeros in here, 0 plus 0 is not greater than or equal to 2, because that would say 0 is greater than or equal to 2. It's supposed to be a 2, which, of course, is false. So that means that this is false. We would shade in the other direction. Maybe I'll... Trying to decide how I want to do my colors. Well, maybe I'll just do purple arrows and I'll use a highlighter to actually color it. And I like to draw arrows uh, rather than do the shading because I've still got another line to graph um, and I don't want the, the shading to get in the way and make a big mess that way. So um, now the other one, y is less than or equal to 2. Again, we start with our boundary line and I didn't really mention that on the last one, but the boundary line there would just be y equals 2. Um, now, again, people get all kinds of confused with this. Um, but really the y equals a number is a horizontal line. If we look at one of these points here, y equals 2, uh, it there at that point, 0, 2, also at 1, 2, and 2, 2, and 3, 2, and 4, 2, and 5, 2, and 6, 2, and just to be you know, really annoying, we'll go this way as well. So all of those points, and of course it would be solid because it has the equal to, all of those points have a y value of 2. So when you think of it that way, really no reason we should uh, get confused there. But, you know, again, I'm sure someone still will. But all those points, y is 2, and that's really all that that boundary line equation is saying. Now the inequality is saying we want the values that are less than or equal to 2. Uh, and again, you could still use a test point, but I would just look at it this way. It's going to go down because that's where the values of y are less than 2. I guess I never really mentioned the other method that I like to use. Um, there, and uh, there's a couple of ways to look at it. If I look at the original inequality for x plus y is greater than or equal to 2, uh, the x and the y are supposed to be greater than something. Both x and y are greater than stuff as they go up or to the right on their axes, which would, again, use that same side that we looked at there. Um, now, as far as shading, again, it is and. Let me get my highlighter ready here, see if I've got that, and that should work. You'll use a wholly different color here. So we shade where they overlap, which is going to be this area over here. That's the one that's covered by both. And of course, we'd get all the way in that corner. I might have to make my uh, highlighter a little bit smaller there to get that uh, shaded in pretty well. Um, and so it looks like that for where we shade. Um, and again, really, you should only shade the actual solution region. Otherwise, it's not necessarily clear, uh, unless you do a nice job of it, of what you're saying is the actual solutions to that compound inequality. So that's what I would have that look like. And then 27, this one is an or compound inequality. So anything that gets shaded by either one is going to get shaded, um, shaded in. So we just look at those two. <coughs> the first one, 4x is less than y, that's a little bit funny. I might just flip that around, have to say y is greater than 4x. Um, and then uh, that's got a y-intercept of 0, and then a slope of 4, so up 4, right 1, uh, so it would go through 8, uh, or 2, 8, I should say, down 4, left 1, and then uh, negative 2, negative 8. And again, trying to line that up as best I can without an actual grid. Uh, this one would be dashed. It's kind of hard for me to show that on here. Not the best dasher. Um, so that looks like that. Now, again, f as far as where to shade that one, again, the y values are supposed to be greater than something. 
that would go up the y-axis. Um, the x values are supposed to be less than something, so it would go to the left on the x-axis. So I would agree that it's on this side here. Um, and the other way to do that, again, would be a test point. Zero, zero is uh, kind of covered already, so we can't use that. Um, one of my other favorite test points is the point 1010. It's just usually kind of far away, and but still easy to work with. If I use test 1010, I get 40 is less than 10, which of course is false. So this side is the false side, so the side we claimed already is the true side. That's how that would work. Um, the other one, y is less than negative 2. Again, this is going to be another horizontal line. Uh, this one will be dashed, however. But negative 2 is down here. So dash that out. Looks something like that. Not my straightest line ever, but hopefully you get the idea. So that's the y is less than negative 2. And again, y is less than that as you go down the y-axis. So everything that is uh, covered by either one of those gets shaded. So everything over here and everything down here. The only area that doesn't get shaded in is this one over here. It's not covered by anything. So that's uh, what that one would look like. All right, well, hopefully you found this helpful, and as always, thank you for watching.